Here's how to enable Linux on a Chromebook and get a desktop up and running without running. Now when we first enable Linux, we will be brought to this command line, but not to worry because by the end of this video we will have this desktop up and running. It will take about 12 commands and about a half an hour to an hour depending on your internet speed because most of your time will likely be spent downloading. Now without further ado, let's go! First things first, we're going to go to settings on our Chromebook and in the list on the left side, we're going to click the drop down labeled advanced. In the list that comes up, we're going to click developers. This will bring us to the developer section in our settings where we should see a turn on button next to Linux development environment. If you do not see this option, then unfortunately your Chromebook isn't able to add Linux. If you do see this option though, we're going to click the turn on button. This will cause a window to pop up telling us that we can install Linux. To proceed, we're going to click the next button and this will bring us to the setup screen. Here we can set the username to whatever we would like and we can set the disk size. The disk size is the amount of storage we're taking from the Chromebook and set it aside for Linux. Keep in mind that you can change this at any time in settings. For this example, I'm going to just go with the default. Once we are done here, make sure you are online at this point because we are going to click the install button. The install should just take a couple of minutes. When Linux is finished installing, we are brought to the terminal app and we're shown the command line with the username that we set at Penguin. Remember, we're only going to be here for about 12 commands and we will have that beautiful desktop up and running. So without further ado, the first command that we are going to run is sudo space apt space update space dash y. This will update the software index list and the dash y eliminates the extra step of having to confirm that we want to update. To execute the command, press the enter key on your keyboard. The next command that we are going to execute is sudo space apt space dist dash upgrade space dash y. We're going to press the enter key again and this will upgrade already installed packages. The next command we're going to do is sudo space apt space install space task dash lxde dash desktop space dash y. This will install the lxde desktop which is the desktop that we will have by the end of this video. This install will take anywhere from 20 to 50 minutes. Next, we are going to do sudo space apt space install space nano space dash y. This will install the nano text editor, which we are going to use to create a four line script so that we can run our LXDE desktop. After that, we're going to run our last install command, which is going to be sudo space apt space install space x server dash zephyr space dash y. Zephyr will keep the LXDE desktop intact so that everything runs in the same space. Now that we are done installing, we can go offline and we are now going to create our four line script which will allow us to run our desktop. To do that, we are going to type nano space gol.sh. This says we want to use the nano text editor to create a file named gol.sh. Go L stands for Go LXDE and is just the name of the file. From there, we are taken to the nano text editor where we can see that we are editing the Go L.sh file at the top of the screen. For the first line, we are going to type pound sign exclamation point forward slash bin forward slash bash. This is a shebang and this tells the program loader what interpreter program to use. We're going to press enter to go to the next line and for that second line we're going to start with Zephyr starting with a capital X space dash br space dash full screen space dash resizable space colon 20 space ampersand. This creates a nested X server which keeps the desktop together. From there we're going to press enter again and on the third line we're going to type sleep space 5. This will give us 
five seconds to make the window full screen before the LXDE desktop starts up. From there, we're going to press enter one more time, and on the last line, we're going to type in all capital letters, display is equal to colon 20 space start LXDE space ampersand. This will actually start up the LXDE desktop. Now we are done creating the four line script, so we are going to do control O and then enter to save the file, and then we're going to do control X to exit nano and be taken back to the command line. Now we're going to type ls into the command line, and this will list all the folders and files in the current directory that we are in. We can see that the goal.sh file is in plain text because it's just a text file. We're going to make it into an executable file that we can run by typing chmod space plus x space goel.sh. After that, we're going to type ls into the command line again, and we can see that the goel.sh file is now in bold and in a different color. So now we can actually see that it is now an executable file. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, type dot slash goel.sh into the command line, press enter, and the window that comes up, if it's not full screen already, press the full screen key on your Chromebook keyboard, and then the LXDE desktop should appear in a second, and then if you get a window inside the desktop that says error, no PID for followed by some random number, you can safely ignore that, just click the OK button, and... Ta-da! The LXDE desktop. <laughs> when you are ready to shut down LXDE, we need to go to the bottom shelf on our Chromebook and right-click the Terminal app. If you don't know what a right-click is on a Chromebook, it is a two-fingered click. From there, we're going to select Shut Down Linux and wait for the LXDE window to close out. Once it does, we can close the Terminal app. To bring LXDE back up, we're going to open up the terminal app, select penguin, and type dot slash goel.sh. We're going to make sure that the window that comes up is full screen and we have LXDE back. A quick tip, if the last command that you entered was dot slash goel.sh, you can click the up arrow key on your keyboard and this will bring up the previous command that you entered. This just makes it easier so you don't have to keep retyping dot slash goel.sh. If you execute the dot slash goel.sh command and you get some kind of error and LXD won't come back up, this can usually be fixed by going to the bottom shelf, right clicking the terminal app, shut down Linux, and then close the terminal app. From there, go online and then go back to the terminal app and then select penguin and execute the dot slash goel.sh command again. If LXD comes back up, then the issue is fixed and you can take your computer back offline. I will make a future video on how to troubleshoot for other scenarios, but most of the time shutting down Linux, going online, and then trying to bring LXD back up usually fixes it. If you have trouble keeping applications within the desktop, being able to run the Synaptic Package Manager, have trouble with readable fonts, font sizes, or have trouble with the scaling or speed of applications, don't panic, those can be fixed, and I will be going over how to fix those issues in my next couple of videos. If you enjoyed this video, you may be interested in the companion book to this video, the Chromebook Guide to Google Linux. Other than that, enjoy the desktop, and see you soon!